Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of The Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about Ancestry DNA and joining me from the Ancestry DNA team is Anna Swain. Anna, thank you for being here. Love to be here, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> so today we are going to talk about some frequently asked questions. Specifically, uh, we're going to cover ordering a test, activating a test, we'll talk about some general questions, and then what you get with your test results. Okay, excellent. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's talk about ordering a test. Where do you go to do that? It's simple to do. You can just go online. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. But you can go to Ancestry.com uh, and go to the DNA tab. Or you can just go to AncestryDNA.com. It'll take you to this page that you see here. And you can order as many tests as you want for $99. OK, so you just click the Order Now button, and away you go. Yes. Easy, very, easy. Very, very easy. OK, so when can I expect my kit after I order it? About eight to 10 business days. Okay. Uh, you can choose an expedited shipping option, so you pay a little extra, but yeah, regular shipping, eight to 10 business days. Can I buy kits for family members? Of course. Please. Yes, please do. <laughs> and think about it, as you're ordering kits, like who else could you get tested and, and you know, great gifts, ideas, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Okay, <laughs> now let me just talk really quickly about shipping costs. So shipping cost is how much? $9.95. Okay, and if I order multiple kits, and for that one shipping cost, I have them all sent to me, yes. right? And then I can send them to family members. Correct. If I want to send them out to family members, that's gonna be an individual shipping cost each time. Right. Right, okay. Right. Yeah, so if you wanna send it to your cousin in Maryland, then and straight to her, you can either order it for you to come to your house and then ship it to her, or you can just put in her address and ship it directly okay. to her. Excellent. Okay, yeah. and then uh, can we buy the test internationally? Yes, we can. Since January, we can buy it for our friends and family in the UK okay. and Ireland. Okay, and I understand we have some other countries coming soon. Coming soon, <laughs> yes, can't wait. <laughs> Excellent. Let's talk about activating a DNA test. So we've ordered the test, we get the test, um, and it comes in this lovely little box here. <laughs> Yes, the order, you know, eight to 10 business days, you get your own kit, it comes to you in the mail. And if you open it up, everything you need is inside. So you got the instruction booklet here, where it gives you the step-by-step -step instructions. Um, the, again, the test is a saliva sample. Some people ask me, do I have to get blood, hair sample? <laughs> no, just saliva, and all the instructions are here. We, you know, the most important step is really the activation step. Okay. Because if you don't activate the test, then we don't know who to give the results back to. Right. So we do it online on your account at Ancestry. So I'm going to go to DNA, the DNA page. It's dna.ancestry.com forward slash activate. Yes. And that's where I'm going to enter the activation code. Where am I going to find the activation code in the kit? So inside the kit, you can find the activation code on your saliva test tube. Okay, so it's on the tube. Is it, mm -hmm. is it also on anything that's here as well? So right here, it's listed here and on the test tube. Okay. This is important to use this code okay. because that's going to tie your results, your saliva sample to your Excellent. account online. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually activate one of these here. And you know, I get, a, I get the question all the time, um, you know, why do I even need to create an account? Because if you haven't created an account, it'll take you to a new place right. to sign in. And the, the really the you know the biggest thing is we want we want to protect your privacy and give you just access and then you have you know the opportunity to share it with others if you'd okay. like. Okay, so if I have if I already have an Ancestry account, I want to make sure I'm logged into my existing account when I activate the, the test. If the test is for me, mm -hmm. if I'm going to administer a test for someone else, I'm going to activate that also on my own account or they can activate it on their account, right? Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. and if they activate it on their account, I can still, if they choose to share, have access to those results. That is correct. Excellent, yes. okay. So um, do we wanna walk through this activation process? Yeah. So you're, you get your unique activation code, and it's alphanumeric, 15 digits. So that means it's letter, number, letter. And oftentimes, we'll, you'll get an error code um, not oftentimes, but if it does happen. If you do it wrong. If, it, if you fat finger the number in, it'll get an error code or you know something else. Just retype it, make sure you did letter, number, letter. Because sometimes those, those zeros look like. Those O's those. and D's yeah. and yeah, okay, so it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, alphanumeric alternating and it looks like I've got to go here. Okay, we're awesome. gonna go ahead and um, activate this for one of my family members. And since we're doing this in front of the world, I'm gonna give him a fake birth date so that 
I can protect his privacy. I can go in and change that later. Right. Okay. So yeah, you just give his first and last name. You could call him whatever you wanted, big brother, <laughs> <laughs> younger brother. I mean, you know, So anything. when other people see this, if, if I understand correctly, they're just gonna see his initials. They're not gonna see his name. That's correct. The purpose of the name is for me as the test administrator mm -hmm. to know who I gave this test exactly. to. Exactly, especially if you have several cousins taking a test. You know, <clears throat> you can just organize it the way you want. Yeah, put in gender and then ethnicity preferences. You want you want your matches or his matches to see his ethnicity. Mm -hmm. That's an option. Or and then the terms uh, terms and conditions and then the informed consent. Okay. Like all things you need to review and, and make sure. Okay. okay. So this is a crucial step. Big important step. Big important <laughs> step. Linking your DNA results to a family tree. So this is your brother. If you have him in a tree that you have online. Yep. Even if it's a shared tree. You can link him right here in this step. Okay. And then that way his DNA results is linked to his oh, tree wrong, wrong camera in there. That's me fat fingering something there. Okay. Link it. And then voila. And okay. now I have an order in process for him. Exactly. And you can double check that right here on your DNA homepage. You can think of your DNA homepage as like a one stop shop. Uh, for all things DNA, you know, activating your test, because you can also activate your test here on this page, up in the uh, right-hand corner. You can also check on any status. So if you're anxious to see when the kit <laughs> hits the lab, when it's in processing, everything is here on your DNA homepage. Okay, so let's just make sure we've covered everything uh, that we needed to cover. So we can activate tests for ourselves or for someone else that we've purchased a test for. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to always, always, always make sure we link those tests to our, our DNA results to a tree. Um, it, what if I don't have a tree? Start a tree. Okay. Yeah, you can go back to that step. So if you're activating a test and you're like, oh no, this person I don't have in a tree or doesn't have a tree, just go through the process and then start a tree later for them or get that tree on your account later, have that person share that tree with you, and then you can link them up all within the settings tab on your DNA homepage. Okay, so I can just come right back yep. here settings. into settings, link that back to a tree, even mm -hmm. if I didn't have a tree at the time of, yes. of activation. Yeah, and some of you who are thinking, hey, I didn't link a my DNA results to a tree, go back to your account and check. You can see it under the your name, and it'll say link to so-and-so, and. -so, and uh, and if you're not linked, it'll say link to a tree, and so go ahead and do that okay. right away. Excellent. And then uh, I can also, from that same settings tab, um, share my DNA results with other people. Yes. So what are some reasons why I might want to do that? Well, just like you activating this test for your brother, you're going to administrate it, but say later on he's interested. He wants to check out his ethnicity results, check out matching. You know, now you can share those results with him. Okay. I can also, if I understand correctly, invite other cousins, um, cousin matches that I find through DNA yeah. to share their results with me so I can compare those lists of matches. Exactly. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. We're going to talk about uh, some general questions that we get from uh, some of our customers about Ancestry DNA. Uh, let me just show you what the questions are here and we'll just run through some of these really quickly. Okay. So first up, can females take this test? Yes. Yes, anyone, 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 anyone. anyone. Um, if I'm adopted, can I take this test? Yes. Not only, not only can you, but that's a really good way to find out more about your biological family. Um, and then how old do I need to be to take the test? So if you're younger than 18, obviously having your parents' permission is uh, requ required, okay. especially when you're you know, checking out. I mean, you have to have a credit card to purchase this test and so forth. But anything, like if, you have a, if you're a parent and you want your, you know, your five-year-old to take the test, that's completely up to you and your decision <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because you are the parent. Okay, the so there's no, there's no age limit or lower age limit if you want to administer a test if you're a parent or guardian, mm -hmm. but if you want to take the test for yourself, you have to be at least 18. That's correct. Right, okay. Yeah, and there's a childy protection law, uh, so anyone under 13 is technically protected during, during the, okay. that law. And so, um, you know, something to think about, and if you're not familiar with, read up on. Okay, excellent. So, we are now going to talk about the Ancestry DNA test results. Uh, once you've taken the test, you get your test results back. And some people are looking for something in the mail. Some people are looking, they don't know where to look online. So let's um, just talk about that really quickly. Um, and then we'll talk about um, what we get. So first of all, do they get anything in the mail? 
No. Nothing in the mail. Where do your results show up? Online. That's why we have you activate your test online. Everything comes to that DNA homepage that we talked about. Okay. Excellent. So let's talk about the three different types of DNA tests. Um, why don't you explain how that works? Okay. So there's essentially three DNA tests on the market. You have the Y chromosome DNA test, mitochondrial DNA test, and the autosomal. So the Y chromosome is just the paternal line. So it's the test that the DNA is inherited from father to son to son, hence the Y chromosome. <laughs> Us females don't have one. <laughs> so you can trace your paternal line with that DNA test. Then you have the mitochondrial DNA test, uh, which is uh, inherited from your mother. So everybody gets mitochondrial DNA from their mother. And so it's essentially tracing the mother's 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 line back thousands of years. Okay, so I love this fan chart, right? This is a family history fan chart with the person in the middle and their ancestors going back. And it shows you that these tests have some value, but the, but the genealogical um, use is a little bit limited, right? Mm -hmm. So the third kind of test, which is the one that ancestry DNA is? This is the autosomal DNA. And you can see just from this picture, the power behind autosomal DNA. We've inherited DNA from our two parents, our four grandparents, our eight great grandparents, our 16 great greats, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, going back, you, you have inherited little pieces of DNA from each of them. So you're carrying that record inside you. Excellent. That, and that's why it's so powerful in my mind. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about how this DNA comes from those great, great, greats and down all the way to you. Um, this is a slide that we had our creative team make up for us, and I love it because it's a really simple explanation. And it is just an analogy, but it is a simple explanation of how that DNA gets inherited. Can you explain to us what we're seeing here? Yeah. So here we have letters um, that are making up certain names. So you have these letter blocks making up names. Now, imagine this is your genetic code, <laughs> a very simplified version. But you have, you know, a father and a mother, Edward and Angela, and they've inherited 50% of their DNA from their two parents. So Andrew and Sandra pass on 50% each to Edward, creating Edward's name, and then so far and so forth for Angela. But you can see quickly how certain letters are passed and certain letters aren't. Right. And so just looking at Glenda, for example, she gets 50% from her two parents but then her siblings don't get the same letters. They don't get that same exact DNA. And so it's almost as if, you know, you could strategically think about which letters to pass and which don't, though we know that's not true. But in this case with Edward, you know, he has his W, but he doesn't pass it. Right, and so, so he got it from his father, but then he doesn't pass it on to any of his three children. Exactly. Right. Now, if they had other siblings, maybe the W would show up in them. You know, you wouldn't know until you got tested. Okay. So. The other thing is, and, and sometimes people get a little confused about this, is each parent passes on 50% of their DNA, but it's a different 50% to each sibling, right? Mm -hmm. So I just want to make that really clear that you can tell their siblings, they kind of look alike, right? Mm -hmm. um, but their letters are in different orders. Some of them got some things, others didn't. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's really important to make sure that we test multiple siblings if you're missing um, anybody in a generation that you can test. Exactly. And if you're thinking, oh no, I don't have, I know, I only have one sibling, you know, go to your aunts and uncles, right? First cousins, that will all provide another piece of your information. Excellent. Okay, so this is a little bit more scientific. Yes. So we got the simple, simplified version with the letters and blocks, uh, with your DNA. Now we're going to take two chromosomes from my two ancestors, Timothy and Agnes, and essentially, you know. You have 22 pairs of chromosomes we're testing. We're just going to give you an example of what could happen to potentially one pair. So here we have Timothy and Agnes, and they have a daughter, Hazel, and you can see how the DNA gets shuffled around. We call that a recombination, and a recombination happens at each generation where it gets shuffled around, the pieces get mixed up. So now Hazel, you know, uh, passes her DNA on from generation to generation down to me. So a segment of their DNA can show up in my genome or, that's, or that, you know, that same piece may not show up in my sister. So to the point of siblings looking a little bit different, um, though I don't think I look like my sister. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now I know we definitely have DNA that, that's similar, but in this case, you can see how some of the DNA gets shuffled around. I get it, but she doesn't just because my mom maybe didn't pass it. Um, but you know, that's that same particular piece. Yeah, I love, I love the visual of this. Okay, so what do we get from a DNA test? So you get your results online, you just go to dna.ancestry.com, <laughs> okay? And there's two, uh, two separate sections to the DNA test. And we will email you. 
We will email you once okay. those results are online, that they're ready for you to view, to watch your email box. In fact, we'll email you every step of the way. So once we've received your kit at the lab, you know, it's in lab processing, and then when we receive uh, or when it's ready to view. And that's an okay. exciting day, right? It is an exciting, exciting day. day. <laughs> but let me just share, because I have I've done a lot of DNA tests for myself and family members, mm -hmm. and I know it takes six to eight weeks from the time that the lab gets the test, yes. gets my sample to the time I get my test results. But I still check online every single day. Every day I'm like, refresh, refresh, <laughs> right? And here's, here's the problem with that, and I just I want to put this out there. Um, if we have not emailed you yet to tell you that your test results are ready, and you're hitting that refresh button every day, you may see some of this stuff start to show up, but it won't be complete. Because I remember I saw a bunch of ethnicity results come online for one of my tests, and then I didn't see the, the match list. It wasn't populated, and I thought, how can this person have no matches? I'm related to this person. <laughs> um, and it just was because the results weren't completely ready yet. So we, it takes about 24 to 48 hours from the time we start putting your results online until they're completely populated. So if you're one of those impatient people like me, just beware <laughs> that you yeah. need to wait for that. Because it could, like one test could come back in six weeks, another test could come back in seven weeks, another test could come back as soon as three weeks. Just depends on what's happening yeah, at the lab. exactly. And so, yeah, just be patient and see all the results. But I'm glad that you mentioned that six to eight weeks time frame. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so that is all we have prepared for you today. We will be doing a part two of the FAQ where we will talk specifically about those two parts of your search results that you get, the ethnicity and the matching. We'll talk a little bit more about what to do with those results. I hope Anna will join me again. Yes. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, that is all we have for you today. So until next time, this is Krista Cowan and Anna Swain. Have fun climbing your family tree.